स्टडी आई क्यू अब तैयारी हुई अफोर्डेबल Hello everyone and welcome to Study IQ English. I'm Joy C Joy. In this video we'll be discussing about fact tapering and quantitative easing and both of these are related to the monetary policy taken by the US Federal Reserve. And this was a question in the 2022 UPSC prelims examination as well. So first thing that we should know about fact tapering and quantitative easing is that it is a part of monetary policy of the US Fed Reserve. Now, getting started, first let us come to Fed tapering. It's a gradual reduction in the bond buying program of the U.S. Federal Reserve. Now, Federal Fed tapering. This Fed stands for Federal. Federal Reserve or Fed Reserve is the central bank of U.S. economy. Like in case of India, we have the RBI. So the term Fed for Fed tapering comes from the term Federal Reserve. So Fed tapering means reducing or restricting, which means that in order to reduce the money supply, the U.S. economy or the U.S. central bank decides to increase the interest rates. That is a contractionary monetary policy by increasing the interest rate. Tapering is the gradual winding down of central bank activities used to improve the conditions for economic growth. What are the preconditions for an economic growth? That is increase in money supply. An increase in money supply is the precondition for economic growth. So winding down the activities of the central bank which improves the conditions of economic growth which means that the interest rates would be gradually increased in order to cut down on the money supply. The Fed tapering is primarily aimed at interest rates and the investor expectations of what those rates will be in the future. <coughs> These can include conventional central bank activities like adjusting the discount rate or the reserve requirements or unconventional ones like the quantitative easing. Now we are coming to quantitative easing. Easing or from the term quantitative easing, it's clear that it's something related to easing of the restrictions or making something more easy. So quantitative easing means easing the quantity of money supply in the economy. That is increasing the money supply in the economy. Easing money supply in the economy. It's an unconventional monetary policy in which the central bank purchases government securities or other securities from the market. Now, what happens when government securities are purchased from the market? When you purchase something, you have to pay for it. So, when the central bank purchases government securities from the market, the, the central bank is actually pumping money into the economy. Central bank would be pumping money into the economy. Now, by, why? In order to lower the interest rates and increase the money supply. This is what we have seen. So, quantitative easing is increasing the money supply. How can money supply in an economy be increased? By reducing the interest rates. By reducing interest rate, money supply can be increased. It increases money supply by flooding financial institutions with capital in an effort to pr promote increased liquidity as well as lending capacity. The lending of the commercial bank increases so that the money supply in the economy increases. When short term interest rates are at or approaching zero and does not involve the printing of new bank notes. Quantitative easing was carried out in three phases. Now, let's see how does Fed tapering affect India? How can Fed tapering affect India? Now, in Fed tapering, what happens? This was exactly the question asked in the US, sorry, asked in the UPSC prelims examination. Like, how can Fed tapering affect India? Fed tapering means that the interest rates in the US increases in order to reduce the money supply. Now, when the interest rate in the US economy increases, this can lead to capital 
flight from India. That is, the investment in US becomes more attractive so that those investments in India can move back to US. So, this can lead to capital flight in Indian economy. So, that's how it affects the Indian economy. Now, what is the worst case scenario for India? So, what is the worst case uh, in case of Fed tapering? Capital flight. That is, US economy becomes more attractive for the investors to make investment. So, there would be flight of capital from India to US. Second one is, it can weaken rupee or it can lead to weaker rupee. That is, depreciation of rupee. How it can lead to depreciation of rupee? Because there is a flight of dollars from India to US, which means that the supply of dollars reduces, dollar reduces in the Indian economy. Now, as the supply reduces, there is increased demand for the dollar and this can appreciate the value of dollar against Indian rupee. So, appreciation of dollar against Indian rupee can lead to depreciation of rupee. appreciation of dollar against rupee. So, when the rupee depreciates, that is when the value of rupee decreases, it can lead to a higher current account deficit. The deficit can widen because we have to pay more in terms of rupee. So, the actual current account deficit can increase and also when you have to pay more in terms of rupee, it means that the prices have increased which can lead to inflation. So, depreciation has two other effects that is increase in current account deficits and higher inflation. Exports also may not increase. So, these are the worst case scenario for India in case of Fed tapering. So, remember Fed tapering and quantitative easing, these are the monetary policies of the central bank of US economy. Uh, in India, we have RBI which takes the monetary policy. We have contractionary monetary policy which is similar to Fed tapering and we also have expansionary monetary policy which is similar to quantitative easing in US economy. So that's it about quantitative easing and uh, also about the Fed tapering. Thank you so much for watching. I wish you all the very best. Study IQ IS. Ab hui affordable.